In this vignette, we'll review how to use boundary events within a process model. Boundary events are the standard way to describe things like error handling, compensation, and timers in BPMN notation. Conceptually, boundary events are pretty much in line with scope handlers from the BPEL side of the house, and in fact, that's exactly how they're executed at runtime. The primary difference is how the events are displayed on the canvas. Boundary events can be defined as either interrupting or non-interrupting. Interrupting events terminate the execution of the other activities in the same container and take over execution immediately. An error event is a great example. Because interrupting events take over an execution, it's possible to connect back to the main flow of the process. Non-interrupting events are essentially an additional branch that can occur in parallel with the activities in the container. These events can execute multiple times and therefore need to be diagrammed as a distinct branch from the rest of the process flow. In Active Alice 8, we support message events, alarms, error, and compensation events as boundary events. Activities on the canvas can have multiple boundary events and you can use them along with traditional scope handlers within a single activity. Let's take a look at a sample order process where a customer can place an order from a website. The primary flow of the process is that an order comes in, an acknowledgement email is sent, the order is processed, and another email is sent to notify the customer of the change in status from in process to shipped. Let's say the customer wants to cancel the order. That would be a message event that would basically want to terminate the current order, do some stuff, and then maybe send an email to the customer. Here's what that might look like using an interrupting boundary event. Because this is an interrupting event, Anything running in the process order activity will be terminated so we can connect right back to the email activity. Now let's say the customer requests a status of their order. That's another message event but this time we want the process to continue so this would be a non-interrupting event. Notice how non-interrupting events are displayed with a double dashed line while interrupting events appear with solid lines. Because the main part of this process will continue to run, we can't connect back to that same email activity. Instead, we want to create a separate path within the model like I've done here. Finally, let's say we want to show how errors might be handled. By default, an error event can only be an interrupting event. So I have the option of rejoining to the main process flow or diagramming these activities in a separate branch. Let's take a look at one of our sample applications which you can download from our website. The quote process uses a boundary event to show what happens when a customer requests the status of their quote. And another boundary event to show what happens when the final quote is not accepted by the customer within 48 hours. This process uses both boundary events and scope handlers. If I expand the generate quote scope, you can see that the error handling is done from within the scope, essentially hiding it from the higher level view of the process. This error could have been depicted as a boundary event. It's really just a matter of preference. Here's how the process looked prior to moving some of those handlers to boundary events. For consistency, boundary events also appear in the process instance details from within the console. For more in-depth information on boundary events, please refer to the product documentation. Thank you.